What's up, everybody? Trinity here. Welcome back to the Second Street Marvel for today's indie comic book reviews. And that's like, let's face it, that's what you're here for is all of those new indie comic book reviews because that's pretty much uh, what I talk about here when I review comics here on the channel. I like indie comics. And hey, let me know what's on your guys' pull list this week before we get into the rest of the video thank you so much for being here also make sure if you are here make sure that you hit the like button yeah hit the like button you can hit the it's okay you can hit the thumbs down button if you want to as well that's okay you're not gonna hurt my feelings but also i mean whether you like or dislike the video you should share it out with your friends and tell them to come here and like and dislike it as well maybe i have something to say that they might like maybe i don't maybe we'll see once we get into these reviews maybe we'll get in uh we'll find out when we get done with those reviews and we talk about some of the other things, uh, you know, I guess that are sort of, are, I mean, I don't know. Are they, are they in the news? I don't know. We'll talk about uh, these comic books. We'll talk about some uh, movies and just some other cool stuff. But uh, let me know uh, how you're doing today down in the comments below. Here it is. New comic book Wednesday. So uh, in case you guys, in case you guys don't know also, you know, uh, before, before I even get any further into that also, as soon, uh, make sure you're subscribed too, because as soon as we hit 2,000 subscribers, we're giving away these copies of Radio Apocalypse issue number one. And we're only a few subscribers away. We're not that far away. So make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell so you get those notifications. And when you click the bell, click the like. There's a little screen that pops up. Click all so you get all those notifications. But all you got to do to get entered into this giveaway for uh, this right here, we've also got the 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 trade dress and the Virgin variant as well. Um, these are the Horizon Comics and Collectibles uh, exclusives, shop exclusive, that we are giving away courtesy of our friends uh, over at uh, Horizon Comics and Collectibles. Uh, very nice cover here done by artist Brian Lopez. <clears throat> Definitely worth checking out. And all you got to do to get subscribed into that is go check out any of my past comic book reviews. And I made it really easy. All you got to do, uh, my past comic book reviews since Radio Apocalypse issue number one came out. And I made it really easy. There's a playlist here on the channel. All you got to do is go to that, watch the videos, leave some comments, let me know down in the comments below what you think about these comic book reviews. And that's pretty much it. More chances to win, right? Right? Isn't that what they say? I think that's what they say. The more videos you watch, the more comments you leave, the more chances there are to win. <clears throat> there you go. So there you go. But uh, yeah, we'll be giving that away at, as soon as we hit 2,000 subscribers. Also, I do have, I actually do have um, this other book that we're giving away to one of our channel members. If you do uh, like what you see here on this channel and uh, we want to support the channel with the, your hard-earned dollars, we will be giving away this copy of Coffin Comics uh hell witch versus lady death oh you know what i realized i just realized something here let me yeah you 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 can see it too now can't you you're like oh yeah yeah i see here let me try this um where are we at here yeah that this one this one Oh, wait, it might not be this one, but we'll, we'll take it off of that one, too. But there it is. There it is. That's the one. That's the one. No, not that one. There we go. Bam. Should be good to go now. There you go. Yeah. Hell Witch versus Lady Death. Wargasm. This is the conclusion of the Deathocalypse uh, event that was going on over at uh, Coffin Comics. We'll be giving that away here to one of our uh, channel members uh, as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. And to get entered into that, all you got to do is be a channel member. All, all you got to do is be a channel member on that one right there. But anyway, let me know how you guys are doing down in the comments below. We'll get in here and say what's up to everybody, and then we'll get into we'll get into some uh, comic book reviews here. Okay, first off, let's see. Uh, let's see. I see we've got my man Omi Wan, the homie, aka Beskar Batman, my brother. How are you doing? Oh, and look, this thing's falling in my face. 
Oh, damn it. Now I just loosened it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's better. That's better. That's better. It was falling into my face. I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? I forgot to t I gotta, gotta tighten it down a little bit. Gotta tighten it down. All right. So let's see here. I see we've got my man Omi One, the homie, aka Best Guard Batman. Aaron from Strange Marvel Theories, my man, with uh, almost 15 months of member. Nice. Thank you very much, Aaron, for your support. Greatly appreciate one of the Myrtle Maniacs. I see we've got Jedi Mike in the building as well. Reefer Man Review says hi. Reefer. Reefer Man, my man. I, I see. I seen you finally you you finally discovered porn Twitter. Stop. Just just <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Alright, um Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, we have Dixie. Oh, he caught me on a bed. We got uh, Dixie in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you never leave a heater. Never leave. <laughs> that's funny. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> oh, what was that last pickup at a comic store? Book or pop? What? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, I'm going to win. The more comments, the better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, not not on here. You got to go back to the videos. Not here. Not live. Not in the live stream. Not in the live stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Lady Death. Absolutely, it's great. Yes. 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 Man. All right. <laughs> we got Mike Stanshill Porter says, "Hello, I'm taking my mom to the courthouse this morning, so." Uh, while I'm waiting, I can watch. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here, Mike Porter. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Um, we've got Daniel Ha in the building. Thank you so much for being here. Have a meet and greet with my employers at 11:30. All right. Basically hired. I already have to, uh, any of them face. All right. Well, good luck with that, Reefer Man. It sounds. It sounds like you're in like Flint. Yeah. Uh, tighten up that light third work out of the day. Yeah, yeah. Tighten up exactly. Exactly. Um, shut the doors and get it so the owner place reach that local restaurant to find me. Oh, nice. All right, good deal. Job through referral. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, use the clear. <laughs> uh it's too early for the gums to be flapping. Got me a kiss drunk for the stream. Says my man Nick Wilson. Thank you so much for being here. Point Twitter. I can't stop. I'm gonna go blind if I don't. <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm telling you. You got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, I know Reefer, Reefer was on there like, <laughs> he's just, he's just going at it, man. Reefer like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Yeah. Yeah. When it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. When we hit 2,000 subs, it's... Bermuda, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going. Going. I've smoked since 8. I have to wait for the sweet and greet. There you go. I'm in it to win it. There you go. All right, guys. So, um, let's go ahead and get started on some new comic book reviews uh, for today. Um, these are books that all came out this week. Now, there is one book that I... Um, well, I didn't get a chance to read and haven't haven't read yet and you'll see you'll see why um but it's these uh reprints they've been doing the ec archives this is crime patrol on their latest one this is a hardcover book hardcover you can find this thing uh what's it retail for 49.99 uh these are being printed by dark horse comics so you can see right there but it is the old uh ec archives reprints and man i'm telling you these things are always uh so great to get into and start reading um the stories i mean you know, you got a lot of the uh, legends of the comic book industry uh working on a, a lot of these uh like in here like who who else we got um johnny johnny craig gardner fox um sheldon uh moldoff i don't know I, that that's one i heard and haven't heard of uh, henry Kiefer, ed waldman 
um and brewster gardner fox let's see al feldstein um again more johnny craig and brewster yeah yeah stan ash uh richard kraus yeah a lot of uh, a lot of great names and you get into these books though too and there is just like getting in you know you got a lot of that that old school art uh the stories in here um always just i don't know man there's just always uh good books i i haven't read one of these ec archive books yet that's not good um they are very it's just good old classic storytelling and a lot of them you know what's funny is a lot of them um whether they are um the horror like the vault of horror crime patrol or any of these other ones that i've read so far well i haven't read the crime patrol but they're really all just like um whatever kind of little twist of uh, uh of of morality really uh for the most part just like uh, moral tales uh told through this uh, like maybe a horrific lens or a science for horror lens or a crime patrol lens you know through crime you know what uh things like that so very interesting stuff definitely recommend picking up any of these ec archives but let's move into uh today's uh comic book reviews here we got uh starting with uh the first one i've got here on awa shot we've got erratic recharged yes this is the second uh story arc we've got a couple of uh covers here um this one right here done by kari andrews the uh main artist and writer on the book and uh, this next one is the mike diodato jr variant and i know maybe some of you guys are upset because mike diodato jr was uh shaming body shaming the actor uh tena huerta uh, recently for how he looks he looks a little fluffy you know what's funny is hey nobody's giving me a hard time com time for what i said about shang chi i'm telling you cut out the rice on the diet next time it, uh, it'll help it'll help and no i'm telling you my wife's japanese we she they we eat rice with everything it's rice rice with every meal it doesn't matter what it is it's rice with it it's rice with it but this book right here uh written uh by kari andrews with art by kari andrews as well it's got colors by brian reber and lettered by sal cipriano you can see those names right there now this is a story about this kid who is a teenager and he got these powers he's one of these reborns it's in this uh, whole awa upshot shared universe of uh stories if you will and he got these uh these powers that he gets uh like these crazy like electric powers for 10 minutes at a time and then he's got to wait so long uh, to recharge and we've seen kind of everything that went down in the first uh story arc as they had just kind of moved to a new town he's at a new school and uh he had just kind of inherited these powers as well and then there was um this sort of uh this this virus this evil person taking over all of the teachers it really kind of like it almost reminded me of the movie the faculty wasn't it the faculty yeah where they're kind of recruiting you like into a cult and it was kind of a uh like really about that kind of like the the brainwashing of uh people through like their teachers and everything they inf infiltrated the school and uh it was it was all it was a very very cool story now this one right here kind of picks up on that where they are um still back in school but the uh the erratic uh is now known as his 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 name is now known and you know the their school status uh has been downgraded or at least his girlfriend's has uh all of her leaf here um just kind of going through this story as uh we see there is a new threat uh going on here in the town and just kind of how they're dealing uh with life now uh just some very cool stuff in here kari andrews uh again returning to do some really good art i like the second story so far just getting into this first issue definitely want to read the next one but one thing i will say about this uh, where you can see like some of the art in here one of my criticisms of the first story arc was you see how we got the characters and everything in here was a lot of times in the backgrounds on the first story arc or yeah on the first on the first issue you like you could see uh like you'd look in the backgrounds and some of the things that you would see looked very much like almost like you took a picture of something and then put a, a a filter over it and then put a filter over it like a cart a cartoon filter right <clears throat> but here um it looks like they're 
probably you know and i don't know if that's exactly what happened or not but here the backgrounds look a little more you know more like they're drawn and everything maybe not as rushed maybe had a little more time to get this uh this book out uh but definitely a step up in the art department in that sense uh right there but i really did like erratic recharge the second volume of the first story arc there uh very good stuff definitely worth checking out and reading and the character i mean i mean yeah it looks very uh very <clears throat> how would you say derivative maybe of spider-man but no, it's the character's not really like that at all other than he's a teenager got these powers and is kind of going through life and struggling with the things uh that he's dealing with a uh, very good story definitely a recommend uh one from awa upshot but let me know down in the comments below if you have read erratic recharged and what you think about it we'll go ahead and move on into this next book that i've got here on a blaze publishing this is a new one this new series called uh the boogeyman this is issue number one of the series they have several different covers that came out for this one as well but uh the writer is uh matthew uh salvia and the artist is jet or jet you'll, you'll see what i'm saying and letters by nathan kemp and you can see all the different variant cover artist names there as well um this one right here now uh you know like when a blaze comes out with a new series i like i like to check out a lot of them because a blaze has um to me kind of uh i would say made themselves like like they've, they've carved a little name for themselves out there in my little indie heart um just with like some of the books that they have done i haven't read all their books but the ones i have read i have really enjoyed uh for the most part now this one right here the art uh in here it looks i, I don't know i like it seems it almost looks like it changes uh from the beginning to the end uh just in some different scenes like right here in these first few pages until throughout the rest of the book and maybe it could just be the tone that they're trying to set here with some of the stuff uh and things but i really did like this it's like it sort of reminded me all almost of like uh the closet on image comics the one from james tyne in the fourth where this kid is having uh these the, these nightmares uh about this like this boogeyman in the closet but there's a little bit more to it than that uh here where we see his family was actually uh murdered uh seemingly in front of him by these ghosts and he's um they're trying to investigate uh, the, uh exactly what happened here and we see that there's actually these boogeymen in the real world and they are actually after um after this this kid um after his family have been uh murdered here so uh definitely some interesting stuff going on here um setting up this first issue as this kid is kind of taken uh away as well uh from seemingly this boogeyman this ghost uh very interesting stuff here in the boogeyman issue number one definitely going to check out issue number two and see how it is definitely recommend if you want something like that what 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 was it a, a closet horror <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a boogeyman horror come on i'm kidding i'm kidding uh but definitely a good book i really did enjoy this from a blaze publishing um definitely make sure that you check it out at your local comic book shop this week and let me know if you've read it down in the comments below we'll talk about this next book here man this one right here man i'm telling you like this is another one of those series man boom boom studios has several of these series that are like this <clears throat> now i did say this about uh something is killing the children there for a while as well but this one um right here seems to be kind of like this like i'm telling you almost uh the same way in that vein but this is uh once in future issue number 29 written by karen gillen it's got art by dan mora colors by tamar bonavillan lettered by ed duke shire you can see all those names right there in this intro page and this story while it has seemed a little bit long in the tooth and everything that's going on here um, I've quite enjoyed it now. I, and I've said this multiple times is I want to go back cause they released that hardcover version of this, of the first, uh, I believe it was about 18 issues. Cause I think they're going in six issue story arcs, I believe it was the first 18 issues in this, in this hardcover book. And it was really nice. Um, and I want to go back and read it just to kind of, uh, refresh my memory on some of these things and, you know, just kind of, 
uh, get, I don't know, bring myself back up to speed again of some of the things that have happened. Because it seems like there's been so much that has happened here throughout this series, especially by the time we get here. Um, after, like, because the last couple of issues of this series have been absolutely fire. And I say it's something like something is killing the children in the way that it's like, oh, like, there's some stuff that's really good. And it's like, ah, oh, then it kind of goes down. I feel like I'm kind of like, okay, like, can we move this along? And then it picks it back up again and um, just uh, goes into full throttle. And these past couple of issues have been just that. And then we get here into this um, this latest issue here in 29, where we're kind of seeing the repercussions of it. Of it. If you didn't uh, know, we did see um, Rose in the last issue. Um, looked like she was uh, down and out uh, for the count. But uh, we see there's just a little more than meets the eye. A little more uh, going on here um, than meets the eye. As we see um, King Arthur here. Uh, they're taking on Rose in Otherworld. And of course, we see we see Grand, Grand, and Duncan uh, still going out. Now, one thing I will... One thing I will say, I will say about this is they took fine ass Rose and put her in this silly outfit. I think she just looks silly in this. Uh, at, le at least in these shots, man. I don't know. Other than that, I like Rose. I see. I see what Dun I. I think I see what Duncan sees in her. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that I. I think just as, like it look, just the, the drawing itself. It looks. Like, I'm like, oh man, and and it's partially the costume. It looks a little silly. It looks a little silly. But you see now she she is the new King Arthur or Queen Arthur. I don't know. Um, regardless, we see her here um, going against them. A great fight uh, battle ensuing. Some great art. Great colors by Tamara Bonneville. And I'm telling you, this is one of those stories like if you um, take out any one of the creators on this book, I don't care whether it's the writer, obviously the writer, but the artist Dan Mora art and even Tamara Bonavillain's colors. You take it, you take and um, change out any of these players, even Ed Dukeshire's letters. You take and you change out any of the people working on this book, and it completely changes this book. Um, totally. Uh, I think if they change any creators out on here, they might as well end the book. To be to be quite honest with you, uh, you change out uh, you change out Ed Dukeshire, Tamara Bonavillain. Uh, Dan Moore, this book uh, changes, and I think the quality of it would... I wouldn't say necessarily that it goes down, but it's just not the same book uh, without the same team of people on it. Uh, Once in Future, number 29. While I don't think... Like, I don't know. It was really good. It's not like... like I don't know. I think just maybe just because like the way, the way it ends here it doesn't have quite that edge of the last couple of issues, but this one is definitely one of the better issues um, here out of... Man, I don't know. At this point, we've got three bangers right in a row. Um, I guess yeah, this story arc has been fire. This this latest story arc has been fire. That's all I'll say. But let me know down in the comments below if you've been reading Once in Future and what you think about it. I'm going to talk about this last book that I have here. This is Shock Shop, issue number one on Dark Horse Comics. This uh, book is being written by Colin Bunn. This uh, particular story has... Uh, art by Layla Lee, colored by Bill Crabtree. Letters by Nate Piekos. And I will show you this right here. You flip it over, and you've got uh, Colin Bunn once again writing with Danny Luckert on art. And I'm not sure if uh, Bill Crabtree is on, uh, did this one as well. It might just be all Danny Luckert on the art here. Nate Piekos once again uh, doing the art. Now, this is going to be an anthology book. As you can see, obviously, it flips over, and you've got another uh, book here to read now i picked this up because i mean i do like colin bunn's uh art uh his writing um his horror comic books very good stuff and i haven't been picking up a whole lot of uh his dark horse stuff because he's been doing a lot of dark horse stuff and that's good good on him i know he's been doing parasomnia and i know there's a couple of others he's got going on as well um but i picked this one up especially i mean like i said i like colin bunn but layla lease i absolutely love her art she did the cover art here on this book as well this is fucking fire love it absolutely love it and then uh we get here into the book and you know we get got our introduction from our uh character here i guess you could say our host um de hesta demonia nemu moreau i yeah I'm, I'm sure i said that right um but we see uh here getting into this uh one of these two stories this first one called familiars uh where we see this guy is 
um, kind of moving into uh, this new apartment, just moving into this new apartment, and um, there's something peculiar about this apartment and everything uh, going on here. And then we see uh, his son, uh, his kids, uh, come over to visit as well. And they sit there and they have a good time in what seems to be an enchanted house. I don't know. Who is it enchanted by? Well, that's what remains to be seen in issue number two. Um, this first story here, uh, again, written by Colin Bunn, art by Layla Lease. Absolutely fucking love Layla Lease's work. One of my current favorite artists out there right now um, in Layla Lease, uh, especially for all, all the shit she does. Um, her art uh, is just, it's just great. Um, and definitely fits the uh, this uh, horror genre that she does a lot of. She also, do, if you go check out her Instagram, she does a lot of, like, uh, like I don't know, like, I guess you would say erotic art. Uh, absolutely great stuff uh, out of Layla Lease. Uh, definitely in this issue as well, doing horror as she does so well. And a lot of it, too, is because, like, the bodies and everything, um, the way, like, she does, like, the joints and everything... Um, especially at times when it's like horrific, like it looks really crazy, twisted, contorted, and looks like it looks repulsive, and it's fucking great. Absolutely, uh, her style fits the art genre uh, or the horror genre very well. And then here on the second story, we've got Danny Luckert in uh, right, uh, doing the art in something in the wood, uh, something in the woods in the dark. Uh, right here, once again, we get our host, uh, Days Days Demona. Nemu Moreau here, and you can see the difference in the art here of Danny Luckert. Again, some very good art out of Danny Luckert here as we uh, find that there are these friends uh, going into the forest. They're hiking. They're out hiking, and they go stay in the forest. They're going to be camping out for a couple of days, it would seem, but we can see this group of friends. Uh, there's obviously some tensions here between uh, one of these couples as well, as we can see... Uh, the friends kind of getting into it and um, the man and the woman trying to work through it. But there's a little bit more out there in the forest than they are expecting here this night. Uh, absolutely great stuff. Uh, once again here in the second story. Um, or is it the first story? I don't know. Uh, Danny Luckert's art here. Very good stuff here going along with Colin Bunn's uh, great horror writing. Um, again, good flip book. Definitely worth checking out. Um, at your local comic book shop. Again, this is uh, $3.99, and I would say worth every penny um, coming out of Dark Horse Comics. But let me know down in the comments below if you've read Shock Shop and what you think about it. Now, I, I didn't pick up this last book. I didn't pick up this last book. I didn't read it. I picked it up for my son, but I also uh, got this one as well because uh, is the art here uh, on the cover was actually done um, by Attack Peter, um, guy uh, that I kind of met through uh, Den of Nerds, you know, you see him commenting there a lot, hanging out. And then uh, he's had his own channel that he started as well. And he works for uh, Skybound as well, doing, uh, and he's an artist, just doing different prints and shit that he does on his YouTube channel. Definitely make sure you go check it out. Again, his name is Attack Peter. And this is the Attack Peter uh, variant here. Absolutely. Uh, great shit, man. Uh, great shit. Uh, Attack Peter, if you're, if you're seeing this and you're watching this, Good shit, man. Absolutely love it. I know he's got like a, a store that he does um, or a website where he sells a lot of his art as well. Definitely some very cool stuff. Definitely. But uh, that's all I've got for my comic books uh, this week. Let me know down in the comments below what's on your comic book pull list and what of these books. Do we have this the same? Are you in picking up any of the same books? Let me know down in the comments below. And we'll get back here into the live chats to see what you all are talking about. See what you all have to say. Uh, cream of some young... What? Um, okay. What the hell? Where the drama at? <laughs> yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere, man. Uh, how you doing, Tommy? Thank you so much for being here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, need a beer? Yeah, get one. Yeah. <laughs> some uh, vanity project ripping off. Uh, someone, what? What are you talking about? Um, I love a hard cover, but a soft, a soft back is much better. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Mhm. Mm
Hmm. So, similar omnibus of old book Rogers comic books. Nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. The classic shit. Yeah. Did I make watch? Must watch the Twitter. <laughs> I like them big. I like them chunky. I like them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Erotic. Uh, erotic has a new series out. Er yeah, erratic. Erratic. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. I smoked. <laughs> oh man, you guys are cracking me up. Good morning, Star Wars MC G. Yeah. Now I want a Cuban sandwich. There you go. There you go. Not ready. Erratic. Um. Yet my writings and daily thoughts are very erratic. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine. All right, man. Have a good one, Reefer. Have a good day. Good luck at your uh, interview. Yeah, good luck at your interview. Um, working on uh, an adoption day, catching up on some stuff. Uh, hope you're doing well. All right. All right. Good deal, Star Wars MCOG. Hope you're doing well as well. Um, comic book gives me the tangles. Somebody is getting old and needs to refresh his memory. Smoke a little. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enchanted Palace is where Moon Knight buys his suits next door to a men's warehouse. <laughs> I see what you're trying to do there. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to trigger me. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas text Venger. What is up? Stopping by from work. All right. I hope you're doing well, Lucas text Venger. Hope all's going well with you. Hope you're having a good day. We know you're living living the Chili's life. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, here, sorry. I'm 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 bagging these I'm bagging these comics back up as uh as I'm talking here. Um. But yeah. What what else you guys got? I mean, I see there's uh quite quite a bit of stuff going on. You know, I kind of had this uh, I had this theory. You know, I dropped this video. Um, a couple of a couple of weeks ago, about um, about about the Thunderbolts, you know, and how like I'm looking forward to what they're gonna do. Although I don't think they're gonna do um, what I think they should do um, with the Thunderbolts, which is like do the things of like what they did with the original um, Kurt Busiek run, right, of the Thunderbolts, where you had uh, Baron Zemo in charge of the thunderbolts who created them um in order to go out there and gain the good will of the people you know maybe i should yeah is the comic sh uh shops picking up on biz as you drive around shops picking up on um i don't know a lot of them seem to be doing pretty good a lot of them seem to be doing pretty good um right here there we go thunderbolts thunderbolts there we go um you know i did this video a couple of weeks ago talking about the thunderbolts and how i i was like i don't feel like they're going to do a thunderbolts movie at least what i would like to see right at least what i would like to see because in case you don't know in the original thunderbolts run uh, uh by kurt busius uh Bus busiek busiek bus busiek Busiek, Busiek. This isn't Thunderbolts, but Busiek. Is that Busiek? Busiek. Busiek? Yeah. You get it. Um, but his original Thunderbolts run, basically Baron Zemo uh, had created the Thunderbolts. Uh, it was basically his uh, version, his team of the Masters of Evil. And he took and... They got new costumes for themselves. He went by Citizen B. Uh, the Fixer, uh, he ended up going by... I can't even remember what all their names were. Uh, he was going by Techno. Uh, you had The Beetle, who was going by Mach 1. Uh, you had... Uh, what was it? Was it Moon... Uh, Screaming Mimi was going as Song... She was going uh, as Songbird. Screaming Mimi. But her, she was... Uh, let's see, what else? Eric Jostin uh, was out there going as uh, atlas he also had uh oh man i know i'm i know i'm forgetting one here um who was carlos open there was moonstone i i can't remember what her her other her other name was but basically you had all of these uh bad guys uh basically baron zemo's masters of evil 
who put on different uh, uniforms and took on hero personas after the events of Onslaught, in which they came in and started being heroes so they could uh, gain the goodwill and the trust of the people as well as hopefully gain um, access to all of like shields files the government's files and just different things like that uh, access to resources if you will so baron zemo could uh either sell them or take over the world or just pretty much do as he wanted to and basically just take over the world and that's that's what they initially set out to do and they went out there and they were doing it they gained started gaining the goodwill of the people and as all of these villains started um being good guys and being accepted uh, under these masks and people started praising them they really got into the roles and that's what that's really what moonstone was there for dr carla sofin um was there to basically keep zemo and all of the people in check and keep them reminded like hey we're villains we're doing this to be like we got some shit planned that we're doing here this isn't for us to be good guys and like um she's kind of advising uh baron zemo as they were going along saying hey like these guys are getting into this role play uh being good guys like eric Jostin started this um a, a relationship with a woman called Dal dallas rear Re Reardon, Reardon, um who was like um some sort of uh, like government kind of liaison and um like they started getting involved they ended up saving this uh young girl uh i can't remember her name all of a sudden but she ended up becoming the hero jolt and so and jolt didn't know who they were either she didn't know baron zemo was citizen b none of this stuff they were pulling the ultimate deception it was some real sinister shit man like if you haven't read if you haven't read the original thunderbolts run by kurt busiek you gotta go and fucking read it it's absolutely great absolutely great and so that's pretty much what it is now what happened is as they got into the roles eventually uh hawkeye came and confronted them and he kind of uh sort of took on like he ended up uh like he ended up making them defect and started following hawkeye instead of listening to citizen v and baron zemo after some of these things were going down and it was all some very, it was all some, I'm telling you, some very cool uh, stuff going on in the story. And so Hawkeye eventually took over the team to redeem them to be heroes. Um, and they were into it. So they eventually left uh, Baron Zemo and Citizen V and was like, oh, screw this. We're going to go be good guys. They ended up trying to actually be heroes. So some very cool stuff that was going on, and and that's kind of where the whole uh, first uh, volume of the trade paperback or the the omnibus that I read of them um, left off. And now I've got to read the the second volume now, but it's all some very good stuff. And I kind of haven't thought that they're going to do that version of the Thunderbolts in the MCU. I did a video, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, where I'm like, you know what? I kind of feel like they are going to do what everybody thinks are good because everybody seems to think that General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross had something to do with the Thunderbolts. And uh, in the comic books, he didn't at all. Um, I've read that, like, like I said, the whole like first 25, 30 issues, and there's not, there's not even a mention of General Thaddeus Ross in any of those issues. And I'm sure in the second volume, there's not either. Uh, I believe his involvement with the Thunderbolts came at a much, much later date than, well, certainly in the comics I, uh, I read, but certainly when they brought on the Red Hulk to be one of the team members of the Thunderbolts is probably when he would have joined the team. But they were originally created by Baron Zemo with the point of doing some really sinister shit. And um, yeah, some very, uh, some very, very good stuff. Very good stuff. Now, my fear is that they, they're not going to do that in this, in the MCU. That they're not going to do um, the whole sinister thing, Baron Zemo uh, in control of the team. But then, you know what? Then I started to think. You know, I started, I started looking at some things and I'm like, you know what? What if Baron Zemo is still leading and going to lead and organize the Thunderbolts? 
Is he? Is he the one putting together the team? Now, if he is, I mean, I think he very well could be because I think Baron Zemo is a great, great villain and certainly worthy and capable of doing what I am proposing. And that is that maybe Baron Zemo is actually in control of everything. The power broker? Maybe he is the power broker. Maybe he's in control of the power broker. In case you don't know, like, Baron Zemo isn't, like, some small-time fucking criminal. Baron Zemo is one of, I would say, Captain America's greatest fucking villains. And to think that he went and, uh, you know, and I, I think I mean, like, I even mentioned that in the video. I even mentioned that in the video until I went back and I watched um falcon and winter soldier some clips because i was looking for something else i was looking about uh who is in control of the thunderbolts and of course who are we looking at the person that is putting them all together in contessa valentina de contessa de guerrero herrero barrero ferrero we don't know what the fuck her name is val but don't say that shit just keep it in just fucking keep val's name out your fucking mouth all right <laughs> but seriously and no i'm not gonna spit on you if you do if you do if you do say her name i'm not oh, i'm kidding look i don't even know what that shit's about i just seen i just seen paul from heavy spoilers do a video about that shit but anyway what if because I, I was sitting there looking going back and finding out val and i was like oh you know what like how is uh you know if baron zemo was in control of some shit um, how would he do it? From fucking Wakanda? I doubt he's gonna get through that security. But then I went back and I seen it, I was like, oh shit! He was in the raft. <laughs> they had him in the raft. Because by the end of it, they actually had him in the raft. Where we seen in the series where, um, the Dormelage came and took his ass away. They're like, oh, fuck that. Baron Zemo's coming with us. They came, they came to take, t take him away and everything. Um... We see later that he's actually at the raft. So whatever they did, he ended up in the raft by the end. And that's when I, you know, I, I, I was like, oh, I was like, shit. Maybe Baron Zemo is still in control of the Thunderbolts. Maybe he's actually organizing it. Maybe he's the power broke. Maybe he is. I don't know. Because it would actually explain quite a bit. It would actually explain quite a bit. But he could also not be the power broker and still be in charge of shit. He can still, he can still be, yeah, he can still, yeah. But here's the thing is because, and I'm probably going to do a video on this. I'm just telling you guys right now. Uh, like, I'm getting it out of my head here. I'm, I'm spitballing it here so I could do a video on it later. But my whole point is, is I think Baron Zemo easily could be in control of the Thunderbolts and getting them organized and putting them together. One of the big things that I was looking at was that, was that I realized was when you go back and you look at Val. Go back and look at Val in each scene she's in. What's the one thing that definitely stands out about her, aside from the fact that it's Julia Louis-Dreyfus? What's the one thing, right? The one thing I, I was really noticing in what she's, uh, just her, is her hair. And some of the things she says. When we first meet her in Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, she's there. Another interesting thing, maybe tying into She-Hulk, but she's talking about the legalese of the S.H.I.E.L.D. and who actually owns it. And for John Walker to not be that worried about it. They've got, they've got, they've basically got people on it. But not only that, is her hair, she's got that purple streak in there. You go back and you watch Black Widow. She's got that purple streak in there. And, you know, it makes me think, like, who, who, like, who's, who's, who's a villain or who's even a good guy that their main theme would be purple? Now, we could certainly think, oh, um, how about Agatha Harkness? We know we've got Coven of Chaos coming up or whatever they're going to rename her show. I, I, wasn't it Coven of Chaos or, like, whatever, 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 Agatha, like, Agatha Harkness. She's purple. She's Purple magical powers, wiggly woos, woo, right? But I don't really see, I don't really see her being involved 
with the um I don't really see her being involved with the Thunderbolts, Agatha Harkness. Agatha Harkness, which I know is kind of sticking my foot in my mouth with my last review of She-Hulk uh, episode number three, where I said, uh, the seven soulmates, are, is that this, uh, the Salem Seven? And it's not that they, it, they couldn't be. It still could be. It still very well could be. She probably still has some sin sinister shit up her own sleeve that she wants to do, but who's the other, th the other villain? It's, it's, it's Baron Zemo. It's Bar like, he's got the purple mask and, and... You know, he's purple, his theme's kind of purple, you know, you see, like, that's his thing, it's purple. Hey, I like purple, I like Baron Zemo, fuck yeah. Hail Hydra. But, I could easily see Baron Zemo being behind organizing, maybe he's the shadowy one behind the, the scenes that is getting Val to get these people together. And, but, you know, again, it was the purple hair, the purple theme, but then not only that, uh, at the end of the series, when we see that uh, the Flag Smashers, one world, one people, they got blown up. Did they really die? You know, we're hearing these uh, kind of these these rumors about uh, what was it? Uh, hearing these rumors about the New World Order and the Serpent Society. Very interesting stuff, and that it might that would still. Um, possibly tie into the Flag Smashers as well. Uh, if you go back and read the Sam Wilson Captain America comic books, there's definitely some stuff going on there. I, like, because it's even teased in the show, like with Serpent Society as well. Just some of the things that happened in the comic books that we see happening here in the MCU. But, um, I mean, aside for, aside from that, um, we seen that uh, Baron Zemo's butler blew up the fucking the the vehicle. Whether than people died or not is a completely other uh, situation altogether. But we see that he did that. And we know this motherfucker is down with Baron Zemo. And we also seen that Zemo was in, um, the, the, he was in prison. He was, he was there on the raft. And he was sitting there and he heard about it. Like, ah, like, yeah, we got them sons of bitches. You know what I mean? Um, and now the thing is, like, Baron Zemo in the MCU don't uh, like, you can see he's, uh, don't like the supre the superhero supremacy, and I think that's very interesting. Um, because like in the in the comics, you can see like um he had people who like I'm not sure that any of those people were actually, I guess, super soldiers in the sense they were created by the government. And it brings up questions about like She Hulk, who's trying to get uh who's trying to use the needle to get her blood in there as well, right? In the She Hulk show. For creating these, you know, super soldiers and whatnot. Very, I like, it was very interesting. So I started thinking maybe it is Baron Zemo because we did see his butler blow up uh, the vehicle. And also, Val said, she goes, oh, yeah, shame about that. You know, well, whoever it was that did that sure saved everybody a lot of paperwork. I'm sure everybody's happy. It works out for everyone. This is a good thing. And she's like, I didn't have anything to do with it. But maybe I did. But I didn't. Or did I? She does the mm -hmm, she does the whole thing there, and it makes you question like, did she? Didn't she? She got the purple streak in her hair, just like Baron Zemo. Maybe she's working for Zemo. And even if she is, say, a good guy, you know, we know in the comics she's uh, worked alongside uh, Nick Fury. They even had a thing, didn't they? Didn't they even have a thing in the comics? Uh, regardless. Uh, she could be playing. She could still be playing both sides or whatnot. Um, all that shit doesn't really matter. But I think maybe it's still Baron Zemo in in control of it. And the thing is, like I kind of started to think of it would actually be so great because they could still do the same sinister kind of shit that I wanted to see from the comic books. Because say Baron Zemo is leading it up, and maybe it has something to do with Kingpin. Maybe it has something to do with uh, Doctor Doom. Maybe they're all working in cahoots. Maybe they're all in cahoots. We don't know. We don't know quite yet. But it did start making me think um, about that. Because he could be behind it, getting these people organized. And maybe um, Val is, we see uh, the, the forming of the team where, you know, we got John Walker there. A guy who was trained by the military, who was, he feels kind of 
he kind of feels disenfranchised um, because he was trained by the government to do what he does. They went, they were ready to drop him like a bad habit, but he still ended up getting to become a good guy. He believed he was the good guy, and was he doing the right? Did he do the right thing? Maybe not, but I mean, he did what they were tra uh, they trained him to do, and he feels he was doing the right thing. We've got Yelena Belova coming into the mix as well. Supposedly, she's going to be the leader of the Thunderbolts, and I could very much see that happening as well. But uh, where she is kind of uh, believes she's doing something good and ends up being a good guy. You got Emil Blonsky. Emil Blonsky here who, oh, after his heartwarming speech in episode number two of She-Hulk, I thought I was going to be bloody Captain America, right? He is once again somebody feeling a little disenfranchised, feels like, not that people owe him something, but feels that he's basically been disenfranchised. And he's ready to be a good guy. He's ready to be a good guy. He wants to fight the good. He wants to fight the good fight. So I could easily see him being on the Thunderbolts. Take a look at Ghost. Obviously, Ghost from Ant-Man 2, somebody we haven't heard of in a while. Um, she trained by Shield, doing some pretty fucked up shit for Shield, believing she was the good guy. And they were ready to drop her like a bad habit. She did some bad things as well to try to, for, you know, all for the betterment of herself, uh, essentially. And that's one of the things. I mean, and, and obviously, that's kind of the recurring theme is these people, uh, these supposed uh, heroes uh, or villains who feel disenfranchised and want, still want to do good. They want to be good guys. And that is very much a fucking huge theme of the Thunderbolts. Now, I think if they t if if they're doing what I think what I'm thinking they're doing now if Baron Zemo still in control of this I think that might be even more sinister than what they did in the comics where they had a group of villains that they were bringing in that started thinking like yeah I want to be a good guy I want to be a good guy and they got into the role and they ultimately all end up becoming villains again but they get into it which I think it's even more sinister if it is Baron Zemo who is in control of Thunderbolts he's in control of Val who is out there putting together this team of people who feel like they have been disenfranchised, who were the good guys, who ended up being villains, but they want to do good, and they are out there, and they come together there, and they are doing good shit. Supposedly, I think this team does something good, like uh, in the Secret Invasion series, uh, supposedly that could lead to that good faith leading into the Thunderbolts movie. And then you get this group of guys who feel disenfranchised, who are coming together, and they are doing good, and they are being good guys, right? They're being good guys. They get accepted. They're like, oh, like finally, we're getting our fucking due. You know, Emil Blonsky is there. There, there is uh, abomination. Like, hey, man, like people finally love us. You know, Ghost is like, thank you. Like, shit. I said, I, I was just trying to be do good shit anyway. You laying them below, like, hey, like I'm just trying to be a fucking good guy. You got all these people there just trying to be fucking good guys, right? They, they, they feel disenfranchised, and then to come and find out that they're actually working and getting information and doing all this shit for fucking Baron Zemo. Fuck. I mean, could you imagine the man that, like, brought the rift between the Avengers? You know, in the Falcon and Winter Soldier series, when they showed Daniel Brühl's name in the credits, they showed the one thing about, um... The one, the one quote from Zemo. I think it was. I think that was in the movie where about uh, once, like the nation that crumbles from the inside or whatever is dead forever. Like, like I, I'm like, dude, that's fucking crazy because it all still has to do with exactly the same thing that happened in the comics originally. Though it comes about a little bit. The situation is obviously a bit different, but I'm like, damn, that's even more fucking sinister than having people who were villains. And you know, and, and I'm sure a lot. And I will say a lot of people, a lot of the villains, their biggest thing, and that's what makes them great villains too, is that usually the great villains, uh, the difference between them and, and the good guys is the uh, the things uh, in which they're willing to justify to meet their ends, right? Um, because they're doing it for a loved one or because they were wronged or whatnot. And they start doing bad things because they think that's okay because they were wronged and all that shit. Like, I, And again, so, uh, but... I think that's even more sinister. Like these guys think they're fucking coming together because like, like we are the good guys and they come together and they do the good shit only to find out they're doing all that good shit for the goodwill of Baron Zemo and he deceives them all. 
Fuck. Right? Like, that's even more fucked up. Because, like, they're all on board thinking they're doing a good thing. And they're not. It turns out they are actually working for Hydra. Or Baron Zemo in this case. Which is weird because in, like... Yeah. Yeah. Because in the MCU, we know Baron Zemo don't necessarily like the superhero supremacy. But that's not to say that he wouldn't be willing to use all of that same stuff against them. Uh, I, I think it would kind of explain why he so shot the uh, the doctor. The doctor who, made this, who recreated the super soldier serum. It very much explains that. Because the, the guy's probably sitting there like, bro, the fucking power broker, my boss is right fucking next to you. Loose lips sink ships. But loose lips that can't be loose can't sink any ships. And he took care of that shit. I think Baron Zemo could very well still be forming the Thunderbolts and still be doing his sinister plan. And I think that's fucking great. Like, say that's the Thunderbolts movie, right? Say that's the Thunderbolts movie. Is it like like every like we get introduced to the team and all the players along the way, and then the whole the whole movie ends up being that these guys going out there like they become the team and everything, only to be deceived by Baron Zemo at the very end. You know they find out he's the maybe they find out that he's the bad guy at the very end of the movie, and then that's what leads into like I, I, I don't know I, it's cool shit they could do there. There's definitely some cool shit they could do there. But I I, I was just sitting there thinking about that shit. I'm like yeah. Maybe Baron Zemo's act, because like that's even that sounds even more sinister and fucked up if you ask me. But that's just if you ask me. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about my about my hair about my hair brain theories about my hair brain theories. Okay. Um. Uh, comic book uh, comic book shops around me have all but disappeared. Um. Yeah. I. I mean that's. Look, um, I will I will say there's one thing to be said when and this is uh when it comes to uh really like any any business even comic uh comic especially a comic book shop is um having a good business sense uh knowing what what to order what not to order I mean I kind of feel in a lot of senses that uh, like people just aren't good at running businesses. And it's true. I mean, a lot of people aren't. That's why a lot of people, you know, hire other people to help tell them what to do. Advisors and shit like that. Managers and stuff like that. They can do things. But, uh, yeah, no, things uh, things around here, um, pretty good. The, a lot of the shops that I visit uh, have been doing good. I know one shop that I visit, they or that I used to visit anyway, they ended up closing their main spot. But what they ended up doing it was instead of um having a business front what they now do is they just do uh probably i don't know probably not from their maybe their garage but they have a location where they go on and they just do um online sales now uh be it on instagram facebook uh or even whatnot uh they do uh just comic book auctions and that's what they do now but i would say i mean i think a lot of that's probably on the business owners um for sure because like here, um, I know our my the comic book shop that I go on, you know, uh, that I regularly go to. Um, they say that like things business is good, business is good where they're at. Um, and even the other uh, the other shop here uh, that I go to, we're lucky we're lucky where I live at to have uh, two very great shops. But even them uh, seem to be doing pretty good uh, with their business as well. Um, again, I mean, I think a lot of it is the uh, the shop owner. The business owner are they good at business what are they there for what are they are they serving their customers are they serving their customers i think that's the bigger thing um if your customers aren't uh buy like and that's a lot of the shops i go to is like they get a lot of the books like uh but they will order like me if it's a number one they'll order x amount um you know see if people are buying it issue number two they're buying a lot less because a lot of people, if they didn't subscribe to it, they don't know if they're going to get that second issue uh, sale. So they'll order just a few. And if people want more, they'll order more. Um, being smart about their sales. That's the, that's the shops I go into. Um, the shops that are still in business is they manage their inventory 
um, in a way that is conducive to keeping their doors open. And I will say that not a lot of shops, not a lot, not, not all shops do that. I won't say, I won't, I won't say that like there's a bunch that don't or anything, but, uh, I think it's, I think it's more, uh, a business sense and, uh, knowing what to do, what sells, uh, knowing your customer base and honestly being there to serve the customers because I've heard plenty of stories from people, uh, who have, uh, like Bruce and Stephanie comics, key example, they had their pull list. Uh, at a comic book shop, a local comic book shop, they're but like they buy a lot of fucking books. Bruce buys a lot of goddamn books, but the owner eventually, you know, whatever, stop stop giving him the right books on his pull list, not getting uh, the certain covers and whatnot. And he even told him like, "Hey, I'll pay the extra, whatever you want. I want these certain covers and like all, and all that shit." And I mean, maybe the guy just had too many customers that wanted those covers that were more important to him or whatnot. Who knows? But I think he said a lot of them like, you know, like. But then not only that, some of the books were fucked up and just like different things like that. So it's like, okay, like if you're not even trying to serve your customers, like you're probably going to go out of business. Um, I think there's, like I said, there's just, there, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot that goes into it. And certainly not everybody um, can keep a business afloat. I mean, hell, we've seen um, uh, like... You know what's funny is when you see a fast food place close its doors. Because most fast food places, a lot of them, are franchises. They're not all corporate owned. Um, they are franchises. Somebody buys the franchise and they own and they run uh, and operate it. And you see those closed down. It's a rarity. But the thing is, like, like, why would Subway, why would a Subway close down? Why would a Jack in the Box close down? Why would any of these big um, chains close their doors it's because somebody's not handling business that's i mean that's ultimately what it comes down to um if you can't keep a fast food business open in especially one of the big chains in this uh i, I guess this where, where we're living in this current day and age you're just bad at business and like i said lots of people are bad at it and that happens that happens starbucks have closed a lot of these things have closed and again it's franchisees people running the business and the comic the comic book shops are no different i don't think that um comic book shops closing is necessarily an indicator that uh comics or uh comic books uh, are doing good or bad at all um i think it's 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 the it's the it's the shop owners uh more more than anything i i don't think it has to do with uh because even at my like i said at my local comic book shop there um they said you know they've even said comic books sell just uh as good now if not better than when he opened business 25 30 years ago um business is still booming for him so could be the area um, but I think more than anything, it's the owners. It's the, the business person. Uh, the best community on the tubes. Oh, oh, I see. Look, is checking on the community. I see what you're doing there. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I've been reading the, uh, Avengers Epic Collection lately. Started out with Zemo, the Masters of Evil siege of avengers mansion but before i go back and read thunderbolts nice what what epic collection what volume is that what volume is that star wars mcuog um i like like the the avengers the original run like and thank you to wayne for putting me onto those man uh reefer man reviews um those epic collections because like going back and getting a lot of the old shit it's perfect if there's not an omnibus or if you just want to save some money because they're uh tra there's there's soft cover uh basically trades and like, I think the Avengers ones I've been collecting all have, like, 20 issues in them. They're fucking very worth it. They're using the Thunderbolts to build a version of Dark Avengers, probably um, take from both story arcs. Yeah, and I, I definitely feel like there's the whole Dark Avengers things going, the Dark Avengers going on, too. But I think that even plays in with Baron Zemo's Thunderbolts as well. I think it plays in because, like, say Baron Zemo is behind the Thunderbolts. But say he's still working for the Power Broker. And maybe the maybe the power broker is you know maybe not necessarily Norman Osborn because then they they may not use him. Maybe it is Doctor Doom 
or Kingpin or whoever they're using uh, in place of like the uh, the Norman Osborn there um, who will do that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Dixie says all the comic book stores now sell tobacco, beer, cheap knives, and glass pipes. <laughs> that's funny. That's hilarious. That's That's funny as shit. That's funny as shit right there. That's, that's funny. That's good. Okay. Um, I wonder if this new version of the Thunderbolts will use the Eternal Technology from the Emerald Tablet. Uh, well, I mean, the Emerald Tablet is just kind of what leads to all the technologies. What kind of leads to the alchemy to get people to want to do magical things just through science and technology. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the Philosopher's Stone is the key to everything, Jedi Mike. Makes everything enchanted. That it does. That it does. Nothing else matters except She-Hulk lawyer. <laughs> hey, that's what you would think. That's what you would think from uh, being online. Seeing the online chatter. Um, problem is, uh, problem there, problem there is everything is revisionist anymore. Uh... I'm not sure what you mean there, Tom. Again, I'm like 30 minutes behind there on the chat, though. I'm not sure what you uh, what you mean, uh, what you're referring to there, uh, Tommy. Um, I don't think She-Hulk uh, is as bad as folks uh, say show is similar to... Uh, I don't think She-Hulk is as bad as folks say show is similar to Burn She-Hulk. I'm getting a little weary of silly Marvel. Other phases just seem more serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with that, uh, Star Wars MCU OG. Um, like... I think that kind of what one of the things could be is where all the silliness is happy is happening. Everything's happy go lucky. And then all of a sudden, bam, you get hit with the serious shit, right? Uh, I, I think that could be something they're doing is everybody's there having fun, living it up. Like, hey, you know, we're like, we're trying to enjoy ourselves and move on from the events of uh of, of of the blip of uh of the snapping you know everybody's trying to move on um from that you know like and it, you know it's like hey you know like we're ready to move on we're ready to heal we're, like, it's time to have a good time like uh we got over this big huge fucking cosmic threat that threatened the fucking universe we can take anything else on at this point we can live through this we can make it everything's good everything's great while they are still basically in shock, in trauma, faking it like everything's great, trying to move on. And then all of a sudden, bam! You get hit with the harsh uh, the realities of life. Like, I think, like, yeah, I mean, I, 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 think th I think that could be going on. I think that could be going on. Because certainly there is a certain level um, here. And obviously, uh, from what I've seen online, uh, the online chatter is that fucking, th that twerking broke a lot of people. That shit is like, that shit broke a lot of people. Like, people like, 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 look, I was surprised. Like, even Chillmonger, Chillmonger, was, even Chillmonger was like, I'm like, you know, like, he's not the guy, you know? Like, he's not the guy. But even he's just like, I would like, I want to, <laughs> I want to insert that, uh, I wish I had that, uh, <laughs> what is the fucking uh, Justin Timberlake fucking um, gift to share? I don't. So. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. That's all we can really say for now. That's all we can really say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think the silliness is, is, is kind of there. Like, I don't take it too serious. I halfway expected it after, you know what? Like after, like. Throughout phase four, like there's just some stuff that I just haven't, I haven't enjoyed. Like I've been like, ah, you know, it's, it's great. Um, there's some of the stuff I'm like, like, you know, like, like no way home for me. It was kind of eh, like, it's fun. There's some great shit that happens. And it was kind of like, for me, it's really kind of, it's forgettable. I, I feel like black widow was kind of the same way, but like Shang, like, like everything that's going on and everything is going down. Like I look at Shang Chi and the Eternals. I think the Eternals is probably the, the best film in phase four. Um, and then, uh, getting in the Shang Chi, um, like, like, I'm like, oh, like these movies, uh, these movies are hitting. They got something to them, and they're definitely different. But then getting like No Way Home, kind of like, eh, I don't know, man. 
Um, even Doctor Strange was kind of like, it was, it was some cool shit that happens, but it's kind of like, eh, it's very forgettable. Like, I was already kind of, uh, I wouldn't even say down on it, just off the hype train. I'm hype thinking about some of these theories and stuff that I've got, but I'm off the hype train of like, oh, like, uh, honestly, coming out of Love and Thunder... I like I seriously walked out of there so meh that I even said to my friend right there like I don't think I'm going to see Wakanda Forever at the movie theater. I think it'll be the first movie I don't see at the movie theater when it comes out. And I'm you know the the further things go, I think I might be even more there. Um you know like and it's not even like I'm just all like down on it. It's just like there's some shit here. Uh, like I said, there's some shit that needs to improve. That needs to improve. And I think they'll fix it, but yeah. Um, Obi Wan the homie says, uh, I hope Sugar White can strong arm Sony to use Norman Osborn. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Shouldn't she hope to change my life? <laughs> um,. Um, as head of the Thunderbolts would be fire. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'd get a different Norman, though. Badass. I mean, her hair. Yeah. Val can really get uh, down down on some sweet dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Zemo. Perp. Yeah. Perp gang. Oh, is Perp in the house? Is Perp, perp minded here? Yeah, he might be. Probably heard us talking about purple. And he's like, what? Are, are, are we talking about some Kush or like, oh, oh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard has that gray streak. <laughs> She's a surfer girl. All right. Okay. 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 I don't know. All right. Um, the goblin likes purple. Yeah. I was gonna say the goblin likes purple too. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be, didn't Roxxon have something to do with serpent society and that serpent, uh, crown, uh, very well could very well could. Yeah. Roxxon was behind. I mean, yeah. They're evil. Uh, we've seen Roxxon in Falcon and Winter Soldiers, so they are in the MCU. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Crab people. Crab people. Yeah. Everyone thinks that Thanos is right. Uh, uh, was right. Rocks purple in acknowledgement. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But Thanos is dead. It's dead. <laughs> what about a Samantha Snake? <laughs> what? I don't even know who that is. What are you talking about, Dixie? Uh, Roxxon is a great connect to Hydra uh, if they want to. Yeah. I really like your theory, Trent. Sinister is wild. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all sense now. What I was saying. Yeah, exactly. It does. I know. I know. Uh, Roxxon was Loki as well. Yeah. But I think they were mentioned in like fucking Iron Man 2 or something as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, are they the baddies? They're definitely bad. This is a big evil corporation. Yeah. Um... I think it's 16. I will check uh, when I get home and DM you. I think it's 16. Damn. Um, talking about uh, re revisionism and storytelling, uh, storytelling where uh, they toss aside the old lore. Um, as far as far as as far as what as far as which one? As far as what? Now, because like like look, uh, if you're talking about like the MCU, if you're talking about the MCU, um. Especially with what they're doing now. The whole, it's a different universe argument. Fucking 100% holds. And I'll, I, I will tell you, and I will tell you, like, it 100% holds. Um, the whole multiverse, it's a different universe. Yeah, like, it is. It, it, it holds water in this case. Because in the MCU, they even say that their main universe that they have is the 616. The MCU 616. And that holds true. It's not the comic 616. It's the MCU 616. And it holds true too. Because in that case. Especially seeing what we're seeing. Is that the MC, uh, the MCU. Even this MCU 616. While a different universe from the comics. 616. Absolutely undeniable. Is the fact that even the MCU 616. Is the main continuity. That they want to take and fuck up. And change. Just like they did the. Comic 616. <laughs> but yeah, like, like, like literally at this point, I mean, they are telling us that the, that the movies are 
a different universe from the comics. Although, are they a different universe from the MCU tie-in comics? I'm kidding. They're not. Um, but yeah, I like, like some of it, like, some of it I don't have issues with. Some of it I don't have issues with. Some of it, like, like the, like the team of the Thunderbolts, them changing that, I mean, because that's what they ultimately became is, uh, they started off as something like a sinister project of Baron Zemo's, and they turned into anti-heroes. And that's kind of where that where what what it all ended up being anyway. So, um, I mean, as long as, long as they still hold to the tr true to the roots of that, which it looks like they're kind of doing. Um, anyone think since everyone forgot Spider Man, a lot of the heroes like Hulk and Thor, etc., have uh, left Earth. It's setting up for scrolls to impersonate them. Um, certainly, it could be scrolls, and at this point, it could be shape shifting elves. Yeah. Um, I made it, says Maverick Pilgrim. Thank you so much for being here, Maverick Pilgrim. Waiting for your next video, my brother. Some good shit. Guys, make sure you go subscribe to Maverick Pilgrim's channel. Link down in the description. Ready for Secret Invasion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me too. Definitely ready for uh, Secret Invasion. Interested to see what's uh, what's going on there with that. Um, let's see what else. Man, we've already been going an hour and 19 minutes. Man, I flapped my gums way too much. Do you think they are setting up the 838 to be like the Ultimates universe from the comics? <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, I guess they could be. I guess they could be. But I also kind of feel like with the 838, like, didn't they just go through and fucking kill the Illuminati? I mean, maybe that Illuminati was bad. Maybe they weren't good. Maybe they weren't good. But I kind of feel like they took care of some heavy hitters there. And maybe... I don't know. Maybe they're just done with it. Maybe they're just done with it. But they certainly could be. They certainly could be. They certainly could be setting it up like the Ultimates, because obviously we do see that the universe itself is very different, very different from uh, the 616, the 616, yeah, and just like that, work calls, yeah, that's how it happens, man, that's how it happens, but thank you so much for being here, uh, Maverick Pilgrim, and guys, thank you so much for being here as well. Make sure you smash that like button. I think we're going to end the stream soon here in just a few minutes. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about before we go? Anything? Give you all give you all a minute. I can't say that I've uh, really, really got much else uh, to talk about. I mean, is there any is there any new drama that people are, are, are talking about? I've seen... Uh, oh! You know what? There is. Aside from the aside from the spit heard around the world, apparently, uh, I did see. What is this thing about uh, Black Panther? Black Panther wins an Emmy. And people upset. People upset about Black Panther winning an Emmy. And uh, people are like, oh, that's undeserving. Like they're just giving it to him because Chadwick Boseman died. And I'm like, did they? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, can they do uh, Ultimates and New Avengers? Well, I would. Th well, hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Especially because we got the multiverse saga. Is I don't think the multiverse is something they're gonna keep playing around. I think it's just a sandbox for now, and they're gonna get out of it. I. I mean, will some of those characters cross over? Probably. But. I don't think they're going to make a big deal out of the other universes in the sense that it's going to be something more than what they're doing right now. Like, say they get out of the, the uh, everything comes about, say, you know, out of Secret Wars and then moves on. I think that, like, I think because everything should be settled after that, right? And then we'll move on from the multiverse stuff. I hope. I hope.
Um, yeah, no squirting. Oh man, what? What are we talking? What are we? What are we? Oh, I don't even. I don't even want to know. I don't even. I don't think I even want to know, man. I don't think I even want to know. I don't think I even want to know. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for being here again, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Channel members, we are finally going to get together and read through Avengers Forever. We are going to uh, give one of these copies away to one of our channel members as well of this trade paperback. But uh, yeah, we're going to do that here very soon. But uh, so yeah, guys, thank you all so much for being here today. Um, Only one says, love that, that arcane won an Emmy for Outstanding Animation. I've never seen Arcane, but uh, yeah, as I was say, I heard uh, people saying it was pretty good. <laughs> Dixie's, I uh, want to talk about the World Economic Forum and how it is uh, leading to the Great Reset, led by the global elite, and how they are trying to uh, depopulate. Oh, yeah, like, uh, Dixie. Uh, can I be honest with you? That's, pro that's probably far too much, far too much for this stream now, for me to cover in the next couple minutes. But, I see where you're going with this, and I like it. I like it. I see where you're going with this. Let's talk about it. Well, I mean, you talk about it. Talk about it on your channel. Talk about it on your channel, Dixie. Make sure you send me the link, because I want to watch. I want to watch. Yeah. Moon, uh, Moon Knight and Boba both won uh, tech Emmys. Interesting. Interesting. But anyway, guys, uh, thank you all so much for being here today. Again, uh, if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell and all that good stuff. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't. It's okay. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But while you're at it, make sure you share it out with a friend. And invite them to come hang out with us here on the Second Street Marvel. You all have a very good day. And we'll see you in the next video. Later.